Alright, welcome to your 13th video, and now that we are finally done finishing coding this get text file function, what we actually need to do is include a couple things. I probably should have done this first, but in order to use your uh, uh, files in Q and also your text stream, you need to go ahead and include move my cursor, Qt core slash Q file, and just go ahead and copy this and paste it right down below. So we need to include Q file, which allows us to work with files, obviously, and Q text stream, because remember whenever we uh, use the stream down here, of course, that's in this, so we need to include it. So now, after this, let's go ahead and take a look at all of this other code, uh, step by step, and see what we need to do. So of course, here is the constructor, right here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and move this bugging me. Alright, so basically the first thing we did in the constructor is, this was already pre-built by Q, whenever we set up our project it pretty much sets up the um, user interface, as you can tell by the function name. So after this, what we want to do once the interface is done setting up, basically so the user can see it, is we want to go ahead and call this get text file function. So in order to do that, just go ahead and write get text file. There you go. So basically it's going to set up the user interface and start reading the text file, but we aren't done yet. The only other thing that we need to do is on go button clicked, basically whenever they uh, hit that search button or the go button, remember that we created in like the second video, what do we want to do? Well the first thing what we want to do is we want to find what term they're searching for and we want to store it in a variable. So store it in a string, Q string, and I'm just going to name my variable word and set this equal to user interface line edit text. So what this is going to basically do is this text function right here takes the piece of text from your line or wherever you typed in and it stores it in the variable word. So if we go over to our design mode we can see whatever the user types in here that text function is going to grab it and it's now stored in the variable word. So now if I hop over to my CPP now you know what that does. So now of course since we stored that variable or the term that the user is searching for might as well go ahead and do something with it. Now the cool thing is Q already built in a function called find, which pretty much finds the next occurrence of the word based on where your cursor is. So in order to do that, of course, the user interface, and what we want to do is text edit, because that's pretty much the area that we're looking for, and we want to use the function called find. Now this takes a bunch of parameters, and it's kind of annoying, but basically what term do you want to find or look for, word, whatever they search for, and the only other parameter is Q, text, whoa, shouldn't have hit caps lock. Hold on, I can't figure out my freaking caps lock's on. Nope, all right, Q, text, document, colon, colon, find, whole words. Pretty obvious what that does. Alright, so I think that's pretty much it. Alright, looks pretty good. So one more, t more time, uh, let me go ahead and talk you guys through what each piece of this uh, file means before I go ahead and start with the other part of this tutorial. So basically we included everything that we needed to include, self-explanatory. In the constructor, the only thing we need to do to start the program is set up the user interface so the user you know has all their buttons and widgets and stuff and also get the text file so it knows what file we want to search for and it loads it into that little area so this is the constructor right here just clean up all the memory delete the user interface already built in for us now on go button clicked basically whenever you hit that button to search for a term the first thing it's going to do is take that term that the user is searching for and store it in the variable word and then it's going to go ahead and find the next occurrence of that. Basically take your cursor and move it to the word if it occurs in the text. So this last function right here, um, I don't even think we need to go over this because I coded this line by line and I described everything in the last tutorial. But there you go, there is the last, actually, good news, that's the last bit of coding that we need to do for the entire program. However, we can't just go ahead and build and run it yet because I didn't even make this text file. So if we go ahead and uh, build and run it, we may get an error. Well, let's just see what happens. Gonna run this. 
it's building and yep check it out it runs but since we don't have a text file nothing even happens nothing's loaded in so in the next tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to create a text file and also how to load it in so your program can use it